All right, taking a closer look at any individual element, we can look at what's provided to us either on the periodic table or in a question and know how many protons, electrons, and neutrons an atom has. Um, looking at bromine as our example, this is a snapshot from your periodic table. The number on top here, we call the atomic number. And the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons. Number of protons identify an element. Anything with 35 protons is bromine, and any atom of bromine has 35 protons. No exceptions. It'll never change. Right off the bat, that's the easiest question to answer. We know it's bromine. We know it has 35 protons. Um, the number on the bottom, we've worked with a bunch, is the atomic mass. We call it molecular weight sometimes, too. The atomic mass is comprised of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So it turns out, I'm going to say number of P and number of N, protons and neutrons. Um, protons and neutrons both, ha both have a relative mass of one, meaning they have the same mass as each other. Um, and in comparison, electrons mass are so, so, so tiny that we essentially say they're zero. So when we're looking at the mass, we're looking at the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Um, but that should be a whole number. Uh, we shouldn't have 79.9 .9 protons plus neutrons. So when we're looking at the periodic table, these numbers are actually a weighted average. Um, there are different isotopes, different versions of bromine that naturally exist in the world. Some of that bromine has an atomic mass of 79. Other copies of that bromine has an atomic mass of 81. And it just so happens that based on the number that actually exists out there, if we average them all up, um, it ends up being just about 80. That's why we always tell you to round to the nearest whole number. We would say it's about 80, but that's because there are some 79s out there and some 81s. Turns out there are more 79s. That's why it's just below 80, but we still always round to 80. So from this information, you could tell me right away, bromine has 35 protons. That's from looking at the atomic number. Um, we could figure out the neutrons by subtracting the two, right? The atomic mass of 80 minus the 35 protons. Since we know the mass is protons and neutrons, we subtract out those protons. And we would be able to know how many neutrons bromine has, which would be 45. And then the electrons, most of the time, we actually don't need to do any math for. Um, in a regular atom, uh, like meaning not an ion, the protons will be e equal to the electrons. So we have 35 protons. And since I didn't tell you it was an ion, I didn't indicate a charge at all, we know we would have 35 electrons as well. The reason for that is this is a neutral atom. Protons are positively charged electrons are negatively charged. And so if overall, we're not going to have a charge. Those positives and negatives need to be equal numbers so they cancel out. If instead of just looking at bromine, we were looking at an ion of bromine, um, so bromine with a charge, that's where the charge is written, bromine minus one. Well, bromine always, always, always has 35 protons. But in this case, it's overall negatively charged. So I always say start by making the protons and electrons equal as if it's neutral. It must have more of the negative thing since we're negatively charged. One more since it's a minus one charge. So really 36 would be the number of electrons for bromine as an ion. Number of neutrons wouldn't change in this case because 80 minus 35 is still 45. There are other ways of writing the information other than looking at the periodic, periodic table like we have in this square here. Um, one of those is called isotope notation. So I could tell you bromine, if I'm looking at an atom of bromine, I could tell you its mass and its atomic number actually kind of flip flops. So on the periodic table, you know the 35's on top. In isotope notation, it goes on the bottom left. That would tell us the atomic number the number of protons, and the mass could go on top. So it could be bromine with a mass of 80. We talked about how there are different isotopes of bromine that exist. So maybe it's bromine with a mass of 79, still 35 protons because that doesn't change. Or maybe it's bromine with a mass of 81 and still 35 protons because that doesn't change. Um, if you ever forget like which number is on top and bottom in isotope notation, 
even if they're slightly different than what you see on the periodic table, use those numbers to guide you. Um, 80, 79, and 81 are all really close to what you know is the mass. So that can remind you it goes on the upper left. Um, if we were dealing with an ion, as always, that would go on the upper right. So in this, in all of these cases, I didn't tell you a charge, so you would not assume they're ions. You would say the protons and the electrons were equal. If it were an ion, I would have to either, I'd have to give you the charge in the upper right, like so. Okay, so looking at these examples, um, we're gonna start here with P minus three. Right away, because it's phosphorus, if we look at the periodic table, we look at the atomic number of phosphorus, that is our number of protons, no question. Now, normally the number of protons would equal the number of electrons, but in this case, because it's a minus three ion, that means we have three extra negatives or three extra electrons. We normally have 15, but in this case we have three extra. So we would have 18 electrons in this case of phosphorus minus three. For the number of neutrons, we're always taking the mass, we're gonna round it to a nearest whole number if we're taking it off the periodic table, mass minus the protons. So we have a mass of 31, we have 15 protons, 31 minus 15 is going to give us 16 neutrons. Now I have other notations I'm showing you for these other examples, but it's essentially always the same thing. Identify your number of protons based on the element, figure out your neutrons by doing the mass minus the protons, figure out electrons by assuming they're equal, but then adjusting if it's an ion. So in the case of 65 over 29, copper plus two, right? This is isotope notation. And if you forget, we can go ahead and look at what copper looks like on the periodic table. So there's what copper looks like on the periodic table. Um, you can see on the periodic table, we would say that copper has a mass of about, we actually ask you to use 63.5. In this case, we're given a different mass. So we are given the mass of 65 for copper. That just means we're working with an isotope that has a mass of 65. Um, when we, the first thing we actually wanna do though is identify our protons. So whether we looked at the periodic table or we remembered that it's the bottom number here, copper has 29 protons. Since they gave us a mass of 65, we're gonna use that instead of the mass that's on the periodic table. And for our neutrons, we would do mass minus protons, 65 minus 29 gets us 36 for our neutrons. Our electrons, if it weren't an ion would be 29 but in this case, it's a plus two, it's positively charged. So we must have lost some of those electrons. We never, ever, ever change the number of protons that's stuck, 29 protons is copper. But if it's gonna be positive overall, it must have lost some of our negative electrons. So we would have 27 electrons in this case. Another example, it's written as carbon 14, or I could have given you the question with just a C dash 14. It's not an ion, it's not written above as a superscript. Um, let's look, let's, if we forget what this means, it, that's actually telling us carbon with a mass of 14. But if you forget, again, use the periodic table to guide you. Looking at the periodic table, I know that carbon has six protons. Normally it has a mass of 12. This is a different isotope that has a mass of 14, right? 14 and 12 are similar enough numbers that we can figure out that's the mass. So to find my neutrons, I do the mass that is given to me minus the protons. 14 minus six is gonna get us eight neutrons. And the electrons we would say are equal to the protons unless it's an ion. They didn't give us a charge. In the first two examples, they gave us a charge there in the upper right. They didn't give us a charge here. So protons and electrons must be equal. We didn't gain or lose any electrons. And then in this last example, we're given totally different information, we have to decide how to write it. So we always identify the element based on the protons. I don't have this one pulled up, but we're gonna go to, on the periodic table, whatever has 12 protons. So look at your periodic table, you're looking for atomic number 12, that ends up being magnesium. So because of the number of protons, we know we are dealing with magnesium. The fact that our electrons are different tells us it's gonna be an ion. If our electrons were the same, it wouldn't be an ion. We wouldn't have to write anything in the upper right. But here we know we are down two electrons. We have lost two electrons. That means overall, 
Do we have more positives or more negatives? We have more positives by two. So this would be magnesium as a plus two ion. Since they didn't give me any information that would tell me that this is an isotope with a mass that's different than what we'd expect, we would just look at magnesium, round its mass to the nearest whole number, 24. Um, and so to find the neutrons, we'd use the mass of 24 minus my protons, and we would get 12. Okay, a bunch of these for you to try. Remember to use what's on the periodic table if you don't know what one of the numbers you're given means. It can be a good hint.